Hi everyone. It's a beautiful sunny day out there. Garden is full of bees and insects and all sorts of things. And as I tend to shoot them with artificial light, with flash, I thought it was a good idea to run through some of the macro flash options that uh, I've got here and talk about uh, the ones that are on the market. What we'll do is we'll then take them outside, we'll take some shots, compare them and then come up with a recommendation as a best buy. Um, maybe, maybe it'll be the budget end, maybe it'll be the expensive end, but whichever. Let's start with this little setup here. I've had it a few years. Um, it comes from a company called Kennet. Some of you will have heard of it. If I say Benbow, most of you would have heard of it. Kennet Engineering used to make the Benbow tripods. And they created this fantastic macro flash setup. You can see it here. It's got the bracket that fits on the camera. This twin ring that holds these two articulated arms and was supplied with these two flash guns. The whole unit, I think when it came out, was about a couple of hundred pounds. Difficult to find it these days second hand, even with, the, with these flash guns on it. But you can put any flash guns on the end of it. That makes no difference. And sometimes you can just get the ring and the two articulated arms. These are fabulous because you can just loosen these and put them at any angle you want. Um, they also move to any position laterally that you may wish for. I quite like to have the closest flash gun lighting the subject, which is about here, and the second unit, maybe just tilted up a bit, lighting the background. Very often one of the problems with all types of macro flash is that your subject gets lit and your background is, it looks like it's been shot at night. So any way of lighting the subject and the background is a good thing. The other thing people always talk to me about and are concerned about is how to focus and depth of field and everything else. I always focus manually. And that doesn't mean that I'm constantly trying to adjust the manual focus on the, the bee, the butterfly, the insect or whatever. I've got a rough idea how close I want that bee or butterfly to be. Uh, and in fact, with the bee, it's always at the closest focus of this lens. So if I set this to closest focus, which I have there, and the subject sets itself there, let's say, that's a bee, or that's a CD card. And instead of trying to turn the focus ring or use autofocus or anything else, I know that at this point it's in focus, it's the size I want it in the frame, and all I've got to do is then move backwards and forwards until it's in focus and take the photo. Really is a very, very simple and straightforward way of working. Um, so the Kenneth Macro Flash, the first one we'll do. Upsides, positives, without doubt, the versatility of the two arms and the, the positioning of them anywhere you want. Disadvantages, if you're within shrubs or bushes or anything like that, these can get caught on the shrubs. You can have leaves coming in over here and it actually stops the light reaching the subject. And the other disadvantage, won't come as a surprise, is weight. The unit with the two flash guns with batteries in weighs about one and a quarter kilos. With a camera as well, we're looking at about a three kilo load here. And that, okay, I know it's full frame Nikon um, with a 105 mm macro lens, but that for extended periods is quite an effort. Some of the other um, alternatives we'll look at afterwards, maybe lighter in weight, may also be lighter on the pocket uh, and may influence that final best buy decision. Um, but that's the first one we're going to look at anyway. So many people when they think of uh, macro flash immediately and close up work immediately think of a ring flash. I, I did have a ring flash for a while but it was one of the low cost units. It didn't give me enough depth of field. It would only work at about f5.6 or f8. Uh, and I never used it, so it went. What I do have, however, is one of these, which is a ray flash. It's actually designed for uh, portrait photography. And it can just as easily double up with a full power flash gun as a macro light. 
the lens comes through here, it gives beautiful soft light. Uh, let me just show you. There's your ring of light, absolutely fantastic. It's a little bit bulky again, it's a big, biggish unit, and it does depend on the power of your own flash gun. And you have to get one that worked with your flash and your camera and everything else. These come in different sizes, but they're quite a good system. We'll give that a go as well. Then we'll come on to my one of my Nikon SB600 dedicated flash guns. Uh, lovely bit of kit. Um, it's not so much the flash gun I want to talk about, it's the reflector. And this little reflector, um, again, it's an eBay thing. That was £1.75 from China, including postage. Uh, and it just allows the light to be thrown out on the subject and over the background. It softens that light beautifully. It's white one side, it's silver the other. You can choose whichever uh, works for you. Um, if you do it like that and your subject's about here, you're lighting it really, really well. Very, very cheap option depending on what flash you've got. And you know, if you've got any old flash, any flash, this will work with it. Then it comes to my final um, unit, which is this one here. Uh, and this is an old, very, very old METS 20B3. It's a completely manual flash gun. It has one light output only, full power. You can't turn it down, it can't, you can't set your aperture, it's not dedicated, nothing fancy at all. I've got three stickers on the back that says at F1 to one, at one to one, life size, I use F57. At one to two, I use F45, and at one to three, I use F36. That's at 200 ISO, take a stop off for 100 ISO. If I've got my lens here, and this is sitting on top of it, and my subject is this size, you can imagine how big that softbox is in relative terms. It's like doing a portrait of somebody with an eight foot wide softbox. Um, it gives very, very soft light. This little unit, again, it's eBay, it's three quid. I think the flash gun was second hand, I think I paid three quid for that. So that's a six pound unit, the whole thing. There is no reason why you can't afford to go out and do some macro flash photography. And we'll take all of these into the garden. We'll try them all out. We'll look at the results and we'll come back with the best buy. set these up any way you like. You can have that as a main light, this is a filling. You can have this angle to light the background so you don't have those dark backgrounds that people so often associate with um, macro flash photography. And it does work well. There's no denying that it's a successful setup. It's just, am I going to cart that around in my camera bag on the off chance of finding something macro? No. Um, is it good when I'm working in my own garden? Yeah, it's not bad. So this setup, single Nikon SB600, any dedicated flash will do. It doesn't really doesn't matter. It just makes life so much easier. Uh, this was a diffuser I bought off eBay from China, one pound seventy-five, including postage. You can't go wrong, can you? And what that's going to successfully do is take the light here. And bounce it down here but also allow a certain amount of light to go to the, fore to the foreground more and if I just tilt this up just a bit like that it's going to spread that light over more of an area it's going to help to light the background which is exactly what we're trying to do as well not just put light on the subject come on you Guys, we're going to end with the easiest, cheapest, and lightest setup. This is the cheap, non dedicated, manual only flash gun. It's got a fixed output. I know that if I focus it at about 1 to 2, 200 ISO, I need F45, which is exactly what I've got set now. I've got my focus set, and all I'm going to do is move the camera backwards and forwards until I get photos of the bees where is it, where is it, where is it? that I want. 
It's a waiting game. But with this kind of weight in your hands, it's never too bad. Okay, everyone, so let's take a look at the results. This was the first setup I tried, which was the uh, Kenneth Macro Flash with those twin arms uh, with two manual flash heads on it. These flash heads can't have the output turned down, it is a fixed output. They are both very bright, and in this instance, I had them both set on the subject. Uh, and I didn't have one of them trained on the background. So you can see the background is a little bit darker than I would like. The biggest problem I find when I use this setup with the uh, manual flash heads is the amount of light they give out. Uh, and I had to kink the uh, ISO down to F64. Uh, usually on, on macro stuff, I use either 100 or 200 ISO. I had to drop it to ISO 64 and I still couldn't get an aperture um, wider than f51. Most people get really concerned about diffraction at small apertures. With macro work, certainly at f51, I would get a little bit concerned about potential diffraction, but I get more concerned about lack of depth of field in macro work. Depth of field is uh, reliant on three things. Firstly, the focal length of the lens. We're using a 105mm lens, so that's fixed. Secondly, aperture. Obviously, the smaller the aperture, the greater the depth of field. Thirdly, and most importantly, the proximity of the subject. And when you take a macro lens and you focus it as closely as it will go, i.e. one-to-one reproduction or one-to-two reproduction, even, your depth of field is very, very shallow. At something like f5, your depth of field is not going to be more than about one millimeter. Even down this, at this sort of settings at f51, your depth of field is still going to be less than a centimeter. It is, we are working with tolerances that are that small. Let's get rid of the writing. Just look at the photo. As a photo, it's not bad. Most of the flash, most of the flower head is in focus. The flash has fallen on the subject quite nicely. It just, it ain't bad. But if we look closer, you can see it's, it's maybe just a little bit softer. That might be where I've got plane focus. It might be that little bit of diffraction. But that's the, the big twin armed um, unit. Now this is the SB600, which is my um, Nikon um, TTL flash gun with the ray flash, uh, ring flash system put on it. And you can see the lighting actually is really good. Very good indeed. I shot at f29. I chose f29 here because I needed depth of field. Have I got enough? We'll have a look when we get closer. There's the whole photo without the writing on it, which is quite pleasing as an image. There's quite a nice quality of light. I don't think the ring flash looks too bad on the eye of the bee either. But if we zoom in and we go in right in here, you can see the front antennae, especially that left hand one as we're looking at it, isn't quite sharp. The eye isn't quite sharp here. The sharpness comes in just behind that. This that, that front leg is beautifully sharp. The joint of the wing is beautifully sharp. The rear leg and the rear end of the B is out of focus. That's at F29. This is what I really want to show you is that depth of field is critical uh, and you really need to be working with very very small apertures in order to get sufficient depth of field for most subjects. Okay so I, I left my SB600 on here, I took off the ring flash and I just put on the, the hard plastic diffuser that is supplied with a flash gun. I didn't show you it earlier in the video but it's just the straight normal diffuser to give you a softer, softer quality of light. And you can see that the light quality is quite good it's not bad at all. It does fall off a little bit in the background, but at f25 here, um, yeah, I think that's that's quite a reasonable light quality, maybe a little direct. If you look behind the back end of the B, there's a little bit of a shadow uh, from the light falling down on it. If we zoom in though, you can see all three legs, pretty sharp. The joint of the wing, pretty sharp. 
the eye, maybe not quite sharp, but the majority of the subject there, that's a reasonable depth of field at f25. The quality of light, I think, works very well. Now on to my three to three pounds inflatable flash diffuser. And this is again at f29, it's on the SP600, so I can, uh, the through the lens metering takes care of the uh, light output. Uh, I think the quality of light in the catch light in that eye is lovely. I think it looks very natural. And to me, that's the most important thing. It's a very natural looking piece of lighting. So the whole thing works quite well. I think the legs are pretty well in focus. I think the antennae look in focus and I don't think the eye is far off. It's just look at the zoomed in version of it and you'll see. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I think the Parts of the abdomen look quite sharp. The wing nearest to us look quite sharp. We're at F29, as I said. The depth of field runs from somewhere around the legs through to the back of the nearest wing and the back of the bee. The furthest wing you can see is falling out of focus again. Don't try doing these sort of things at F5. Now we switch the flash gun here from the quite expensive uh, dedicated uh, maker's model to the three pound flash gun I bought years and years ago from a second hand bin. So this is our three pound flash gun. This is our three pound inflatable diffuser shot at F32. And that's the kind of result you get. The diffuser is sitting right on top of the lens. So the light is beautifully soft. I think that works rather nicely. Let's look at the detail. I'm perfectly happy with that. Uh, any fallings in, failings in um, quality in that is down to the user. I certainly don't think it's down to the um, flash diffuser or the equipment used. So that works pretty well. Gone back to the SB600 here and I've put that £1.75 uh, silver and white reflector on it. I'm using the silver side here. Uh, and it's bouncing down and slightly forward. You can see the lights falling very, very nicely on the subject, also very nicely on the background. And I think this works very well indeed. Overall, the subject looks sharp where I expect it to be sharp. I'm not going to get front to back sharpness on this. It is impossible, but that's possibly yeah, one of the better results. Lovely sharp hind leg, middle leg, the front leg is tucked underneath. You can see that you've only got to go a little way. It's sharp at the front here. As we go a little way under the under the bee, you can see where the flower starts to go out of focus. You can see the back end of the bee is out of focus. But the angle, and this is more luck than anything, the angle I happen to be, because the bee is constantly moving, the angle I happen to be, which has got that back leg, the front leg, and the eye, and the antennae, all sharp. Um, has worked perfectly well. Quality of light, I think, looks natural. And this is the most important thing. The nice thing about using flash on anything like this is it does give you a little bit of sparkle on the wings and helps the wings stand out. Just the same setup, just another photo um, for no other reason than I quite liked it. And we've got the uh, B, very, very low viewpoint on this B. Can't quite see its proboscis, but again, I just thought the, the quality of light was rather nice and the sharpness of those um, hairs on its leg, I think, are perfectly acceptable. Um, bear in mind what we're looking at here. This is this is pixel size. This would make a, an almighty big print. Uh, and I don't think there's an awful lot of diffraction there. I do think there's some pretty good sharpness and I think there's sufficient depth of field. Well, guys, you've seen us out in the garden photographing, you've seen the results, and surprisingly, there's not a lot to choose from in the quality of all of the units. Uh, my only note of caution with anything like a ring flash is that the ring itself, if you've got something like a beetle that's got very shiny surface, 
or something that's got a big compound eye and you're very close and that's going to reflect the shape of the ring flash can reflect in those eyes and the catch light or on the on the scaly back and the catch lights can look a bit awkward but we've got the big bulky macro flash which gave lovely results um, in reality with a couple of dedicated units on that you could be looking six seven hundred pounds my best buy it just has to be uh, I carry this everywhere that deflates it goes in the pocket of my camera bag that slips into the look at the size of it there's nothing to it that slips into a corner of a camera bag um, or if not that one then just a reflector great best buy both of those absolutely fantastic uh, they're not designed necessarily for macro work but I think they do the job at least as well and possibly better than anything else on the market. My personal favourite, without a shadow of a doubt, is that one. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching. Thank you for sticking with us till the end, if you have. And uh, please remember to subscribe to the channel, of course, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.